Hello there, and welcome to another developer walkthrough. Um, with me is James. Hello, John. Oh, there he is. What an amazing entrance. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about the reactor, aren't we? The most exciting of systems. Yeah. Or to door control. So I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave and you explain it. Oh, no, okay. Right. Let's go through this. Uh, so what do we have there? You're kind of off my vision. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is the reactor screen, which shows the entire ship. With the reactor, you control how much power goes to the various systems in the ship. Mm -hmm. The systems you can power, you can see are um, slightly lighter shade of grey, and you can click on them and stuff. Also, you can see at the bottom is the power bar showing our current output, which is 20 megawatts, uh, and the amount that we're supplying to the various systems in the ship, which is 9.62. So what would you like me to do? Okay, well, I think we should start by showing uh, maybe, you know, what happens when you take the power out of a system. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. So um, first I'll do door control. So at the moment it's asking for um, 2.6 kilowatts, sorry, megawatts. I'm used to the kilowatts. <laughs> um, and it's getting all of that. But let's limit it down to maybe 2 kilo megawatts. And now you can see that um, first you have a power icon here showing that the system isn't receiving full power. And the shade of like orange or red shows how little power it's getting, so if I take it all the way down, it becomes completely red. And um, also you'll see, because it's controlling the, uh, the various doors around the ship, um, some of the most remote doors aren't getting the power they want, which are these ones here. And the, the doors that don't get power won't be able to automatically open or close. So if I give it like zero power, so we don't have to walk around. So now the doors behind us don't get enough power. So, so if we, we try and, yeah, okay. now they won't open automatically. And instead, you have to actually go and uh, go to the access screen to open yeah, them. Yeah, and open them yourself. Which, uh, yeah, is one <laughs> one really major reason why you want to uh, keep power flowing to a room. And it's and it's also not just through this system that power can be lost to rooms, but this is um, one of the ways you'll be expected to manage it um, to help you out in a crisis. That's right. You can see the bar that I'm manipulating down here. This is what you're limiting the power going to the system is. So if if I click on like you know two. That means that it won't ever get any more than two megawatts. And if you put it to the maximum amount of power that the ship gives, then that means it will always try and give as much as possible, um, up to how much it wants. Yeah, and fulfill how much it's trying to draw. So, uh, what happens, I wonder, when you take the power out of shields? Out of shields? Well, I can show you that. So that, It's asking for 5.23. Let's take it down to 0 0.8. And you should be able to see now the shields start to drop, because it can't maintain them. Mm -hmm. And uh, with shields... Um... And you put it up. If I put it up slightly less than what it wants, it does start to fill up, but very slowly. And the more power it gets, the faster it can um, fill up the shields. And an important thing with shields is also um, when it's when shields are recharging, it draws a lot more power than when it's not to. So if we look at how much the room's uh, asking for on shields. That's right. So yeah, um, I think it's four times as much when it's charging up than when it's stable. And so you can see the amount it requires dropping um, as shields get closer to their uh, optimum 100% yeah. capacity. So it's possible to fully shield the entire ship, but if you try and charge up every room's shields at the same time, it's going to, you know, total the engine, it's going to suck up too much power. Uh huh. And um, <laughs> I wonder what happens if you cancel life support's power. That's a good idea, John. Let's try that. And. I think what's going to happen here is it just won't replenish. Nice. Um, we use up a slight amount of the air, so the air will drain slowly. And temperature will rise a bit, actually, because we generate heat. But it won't generate, you know, it won't go over to the point where we get hurt or anything. Yeah, but if I were to then... Ah, so you can see, yeah, so it's starting to drop. Yeah, uh, so it's not that much of actually losing it, but it is, especially if then a room gets damaged uh, and loses oxygen. If you don't have power to life support, you're not going to be able to raise that back up. Yeah, if there's a whole breach, then you're screwed if there's no power going in to put the oxygen back in. I think that's pretty much it. Like, the other systems act as you'd expect, so if you take away the power from the transport room, it won't be able to recharge as fast. If you take it away from piloting, the ship will have a lower acceleration. If you take it away from engineering, then the engineering can't repair things as fast. What happens if you take power away from the reactor, James? You can't. <laughs> That would be a bit of a bad scenario that you would <laughs> yeah. want to get in. Okay, wonderful. That was exciting and fun. You're white now. Am I? Hmm. It's not that bad. <laughs>